In 2017, the office dealt with increased workload in all areas of its activities, while continuing to make progress towards the vision of creating a user-driven European intellectual property network built upon the principles of a collaborative organization and international cooperation. The temporary slowdown in the growth of EU trademark applications during 2016 was reversed during 2017, with an overall increase of 8.2% in trademark applications and 3.7% in designs. Chinese companies became the third largest applicants for EU trademarks, with demand doubling since 2015. Work on the strategic plan continued at a fast pace. Over 50 different projects covering every aspect of the office's business have been launched, six of which have been completed and closed. By the end of the year, the plan was 55% complete, eight percentage points ahead of schedule. The office continued to put a high priority on supporting staff and talent management, while also modernising the working environment. The headquarters was improved and expanded with the inauguration of the third phase building and completion of the campus, providing state-of-the-art facilities to support team working and a better work-life balance for staff. The campus received another Environmental Design Award and compared to 2015, electricity consumption per on-site worker has been reduced by 27%. Paper usage is down by 31% and water consumption has been cut by 39%. Social and environmental initiatives played an important role. A new cycle path was opened and the first trees in a new urban forest were planted to contribute to the office's carbon offsetting targets. Reflecting the office's commitment to environmental and social development, the EU IPO became the first public body to publish a sustainability report based on new international standards. The office's traineeship programmes expanded with the recruitment of 88 trainees, including 77 participants in the key pan-European SEAL professional traineeship programme, which is run in cooperation with the EPO. In order to support staff engagement, work continued on implementing the action plans arising out of the last staff satisfaction survey. The importance of transparent social dialogue was underlined by the publication of all interchanges between management and the staff committee on the internal website. A major milestone was the completion of two competitions to select specialists in the field of intellectual property in close collaboration with the European Personnel Selection Office. The office is moving ahead with the recruitment of around 95 people from these lists in a first phase in line with the multi-annual staff plan. It's great to be here uh, at the office and after having worked several years on time-limited contracts, uh, it was a great relief and joy to have passed the EPSO exam competition and to be offered a post as official at the office, which is something that gives you great stability in life, not only to yourself, but also something for your family. Building on the creation of a dynamic and knowledgeable organisation through talent management and workplace improvements, a number of significant steps forward were also taken to ensure that the office is transparent and accountable. In addition to the implementation of an activity-based management system, progress continued towards the adoption of fully integrated financial management based on the European Commission's ePrior system. The office has now integrated five out of the six available main modules, including the complex e-ordering system, and is continuing to work with the Commission to become the first EU agency to integrate ePrior with a SAP solution to achieve a complete end-to-end -end procurement management system. In addition, a transparency portal was opened on the office website, gathering relevant documents, organisational and legal information and displaying them in a user-friendly and accessible way. The transparency portal is yet another effort of a WIPO to provide to all EU citizens with an easy access to our public documents. In the modern world, a quality working environment which 
meets the office's first strategic goal of improving operational effectiveness must be supported by advanced digital technology. Consequently, the office's digital transformation continued in order to make life easier for examiners and users using state-of-the-art technology such as big data and machine learning. Besides a variety of tools for a better distribution of files and simpler comparison of long goods and services, significant developments included new e-filing tools for EUTM cancellations, RCD invalidities and international applications. In addition, during the 20th anniversary of the Boards of Appeal, a new e-filing tool for appeals was launched. The back office was extended to integrate cancellations, and in 2018 a major new release will deliver the objective of a single back office IP tool, covering the needs of the examiners in trademark examination, oppositions and RCD invalidities. The final goal of the IP tool is to have just one single tool in place that will allow us to manage all IP uh, rights throughout the entire processes. So not only for first, first instance, but then also for the Boards of Appeal and finally also for the litigation service. It's very important to have a modern and powerful back, back office system in place, uh, which uh, finally it, it, it is not only beneficial for the examiners, but also for the users, because it allows us to, to be more efficient, to manage our portfolios better and to have a better communication with the IP owners and uh, their representatives. After successfully introducing a visual search feature for figurative trademarks, the office improved its design search with the introduction of a beta version of visual search, a first in the world of IP. In parallel, the office continuously improved access controls to information assets to cope with ever-growing cyber threats, ensuring that data integrity is kept. Line of Action 4 supports, in particular, the office's third strategic goal of building network convergence with global impact. In recognition of the fact that the office's work cannot be carried out effectively in isolation, the partnership approach of the European Union Intellectual Property Network continued under the European Cooperation Projects, or ECPs. Within the ECPs, stakeholders took on an enhanced role in selecting the projects that will have the greatest benefits for users. The contribution of the Cooperation Fund was also independently recognised by the receipt of the European Public Sector Award for 2017 from the European Institute of Public Administration. Important cooperation milestones included the integration of the German office into Design View in August. With this integration, all EU member states are now participating in the key trademark and design databases. Significant improvements were also made to the office's flagship tools, including the introduction of image search and other changes to improve user experience and keep pace with technological and legal developments. The office, in cooperation with national and regional IP offices, is consolidating the European Intellectual Property Network in order to spread the advanced digital tools pioneered in the EU and promote global cooperation. The benefits of cooperation were therefore shared under EU-funded IP projects in third countries, as well as through bilateral agreements, and the office continued to work with important international partners through the TM5 ID5 meetings, which were hosted this year in Alicante. One issue of particular interest to international users was combating IP fraud. We're very concerned about fraudulent solicitations in the United States and I understand it is a big problem in the EU as well. And so we have proposed a project which will be co-led between the USPTO and the EU IPO um, to try to exchange best practices on this. During the year, implementation began of three new IP key projects in China, Southeast Asia and Latin America. The office continued to work on projects in India and the ASEAN region and successfully closed a number of previous projects, including one in Russia. As a result, the network has expanded the reach of its tools across the globe.
Digital transformation, the office's staff and partnership with stakeholders all played key roles in the provision of high-quality, customer-driven services. As a result of the very successful user involvement in the Stakeholder Quality Assurance Panel set up during the year, the gap between the office's definition of quality and the perception of users began to narrow, and these results will be fed back into the revision process for the guidelines, creating a virtuous circle. Now we have an opportunity to feed back on, on the process and, and actually test uh, you know, why decisions are made and, and, and find out a bit better why they're made and, and see what feeds into the process of the decision making process and look behind the scenes. I think that's very helpful. To cope with the increase in workload in the trademark and designs area, new working methods were introduced to improve examination quality, effectiveness and efficiency building on digital tools to ease team working. The office's initial central examination, ICE initiative, is one of the most successful examples of how working together and digital transformation tools can be used to improve operational effectiveness by discussing and initially evaluating difficult cases. Well, I've been in the office for a long time, since 95. This is the first time I've really been in a proper sort of collaborative atmosphere where I really feel that we are coming together as, uh, as examiners and as, and as Europeans <laughs> to, uh, to work in a way where we're, we're really interacting. The ICE initiatives also promote the consistency and transparency of decision making with significant improvements in quality expected to follow. Building on the success of ICE in absolute grounds, this teamwork strategy has been extended to designs and classification, to recordals and also to relative grounds. Almost all the ICE initiatives have been facilitated by helpers that are based on machine learning. In addition, a new tool for the comparison of goods and services has been developed to speed up the decision drafting process, and big data techniques are being used to simplify management reporting and control work distribution. A 33% increase in opposition decisions was achieved and in spite of the higher demand, opposition and invalidity timeliness were both in compliance with the service charter. New, tighter timeliness standards for the publication of trademark fast-track files were also met, putting the office on track to reach the registration timeliness standard in 2018. Overall, the office achieved 5.9% efficiency gains in 2017, almost one percentage point higher than the 5% commitment stated in the annual staff policy plan. Work also moved forward to strengthen the IP system generally, supporting in particular the operational goals of enhancing access to the IP system and knowledge, and building network convergence with global impact. The second phase of the amended trademark regulation was successfully implemented in October, introducing, among other things, new certification marks. In the observatory, work continued on new studies, including further research in partnership with the OECD. Knowledge sharing with enforcement authorities intensified with the setting up of a virtual training centre for police and customs officials with the EU Law Enforcement Training Agency, CEPOL. Meanwhile, international investigations, coordinated by the IP Crime Coordination Centre, or IPC3 at Europol, which is jointly funded by the office, shut down thousands of websites offering counterfeit goods, including pharmaceuticals, and helped to close illegal online TV channels. The IP and Education project moved forward, with pupils from the European School in Alicante testing and providing feedback on educational resources designed to highlight the value of IP. In parallel, preparatory work continued on a number of important initiatives designed to help SMEs. I think it's a good way to find these kind of life hacks on, on how IP works and how you can get it done easily when you're a small company. It's about adding value and seeing the value that IP can add to your business. 
Overall, the 60th anniversary year of the EU was a busy period for the office in which many important initiatives delivered results to improve the quality of registration services and protect the interests of European companies, including our SMEs, while also contributing socially and environmentally as one of the EU's family of agencies. Thank you.